Like it's a huge collaborative environment, which is what I think we all love about it. They don't want to wait for a microphone. They'd probably rather rip it off. So <laughs> I had to really take like a bird's eye view of my life at that moment and be like, what? That question is a double-edged sword. You probably know this better than me. It was sort of the first show that I worked on that I would watch. We, we just did everything. So I learned so much. High heels and boots that needed to have like treatments on them so they'd be quiet and they're freaking out underneath the blanket. He's trying to like swing the microphone in there without getting butterscotch on the boom pole. <laughs> I'm mixing the microphones of all these actors in the scene, <laughs> but I'm also playing one of the cast members' dialogue. Yeah. Gary? Yes. He's Gary. Honestly, I never thought I'd say this, but I like the dance scenes. You've seen it every take of it, maybe a hundred takes of the yeah. same scene. I'm really glad we did this actually because it's reminding me of all these moments and these memories that I kind of forgot about. I don't know if yeah. it was comfortable for him, but it sounded okay. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, Tia. We have never met before, but it's nice we to haven't. it's nice to meet you. I watched a couple of your videos. It looks really uh, exciting. You got, you're connecting with all the people that I used to see on set every day. Yeah, yeah, it's been so nice. That's why people are probably into it is because you're so excited about it. I think it probably conveys that passion and, and then people want to watch you just get excited about it. So that's yes. really cool. <laughs> I do get very excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, at any rate, thanks for inviting me to to be on your uh, your feed and your page and it's uh it's yeah. really cool that you're so interested in the show so that's awesome yeah thanks so much for doing this i'm very excited to hear because i i can say that i don't know much about like what you do so it's going to be very cool for me to get a little bit more like into that <laughs> well it's nice to talk to somebody outside of the film world who's excited about this because uh you know a lot of the people that i work with on set they see it every day it's not really yeah. that new to them yeah. <laughs> and they've got a lot of things going on you know it's so funny we'll be just talking on set and everybody's got a you know a radio in their ear and then all of a sudden in the middle of a story, they'll just stop, they'll stare off into space, and then just walk away. They don't even <laughs> say goodbye. They just have to go. It's like, well, I'm going to be all ears. So whatever you want to tell me, I'm going to listen. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> Can you first start with telling what exactly was your job on Legends? So what I do is uh, I'm the production sound mixer. Um, my team and I are tasked with recording all the audio. We'll, we'll show up on set, we bring out all the sound equipment, and then I'll usually set everything up. We watch the uh, blocking of what's about to happen for the day or for the scene. And then some of my crew will go off and, uh, and throw uh, microphones on the whatever costumes we can if there are cast ready at that time, which sometimes they're not. They might be in their trailers doing makeup or whatever. Yeah. Um, if they're ready, we'll put the mics straight on them. And then... Uh, you know, my boom operator will be out there and he'll be um, kind of navigating the setup with the cameras and the lights and, and the blocking just to find out where he can be so that he can get, you know, sound uh, yeah. from the boom, which is sort of our main microphone. And then yeah. I'm sort of setting up all the back, the back end and making sure all the mics are at the right level and, you know, checking whichever ones have already been wired. Uh, we call it wiring when we put a mic on a cast. I'll check the mics that are already on there just to make sure that they're kind of like not scratchy and they're in the right kind of range of what we were hoping to get from that scene. And then we just start recording when everybody, when the cameras are rolling and the uh, actors are acting, that's when we're rolling sound. So that's like a 12, 14 hour day. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Great. Do you use both? You have booms and then like actual mics on them. Do those record like different things or, or how many different kinds of mics and ways to record do you have we've sort of gotten the habit over the years of putting the lav mics on every cast member because some of the shows that we work on there's just too much of a chance for like an ad lib or an unscripted moment maybe something that the boom operator wouldn't have rehearsed because they weren't aware that it was going to happen or you know maybe the camera changes its position all of a sudden the boom mic can't be over an actor so that we, we still right. want to capture that performance we want to give the actor every opportunity to just be whatever the scene calls for them to be. And if we can capture it the right way on set, then they don't have to go and re-record it later on. So, right. Um, yeah. yeah, so we do that. And then we sometimes we'll put microphones even like in the scene somewhere, maybe like hiding in plain sight or maybe just like around, you know, the edge of a doorway or something that <laughs> right. maybe the, the boom microphone can't walk into the doorway because there's a camera yeah. going through there at the same <laughs> yeah. time, but he's talking at the same time as he walks. So we might hide a mic kind of like off to the side somewhere, or I'm thinking about like maybe cars, if we're recording in a truck or a car, 
we might have to put a mic at a specific spot to catch a certain line when they turn their head and maybe their lab mic doesn't catch that. So, Oh yeah. Yeah. There's all kinds of things we could do. What's the weirdest place where you've hidden a mic? <laughs> Good question. I think the weirdest place we've had to put one, I don't know about weird, but certainly interesting. I think in season, was it season seven? At the very beginning, there was an episode where, you probably know this better than me, uh, <laughs> Gary and um, Sarah Lance are on the alien spaceship. I think it was okay. season six. It must season have been season six. six. Is aliens. Yeah. Uh, they're on the alien spaceship with uh, Spartacus. And Spartacus is this big built like <laughs> yes. oiled up kind of <laughs> muscular guy and yes. all he's wearing is this leather kind of like you know strap across here and <laughs> yeah. but he talks a lot in the scene and there's a lot of these wide shots we can't get a boom anywhere near him so we had to kind of strategically hide i think his transmitter pack was in the shoulder piece it's like a like a little shoulder pad yeah it's underneath <laughs> there somehow miraculously and then the microphone actually runs down underneath the leather and we kind of had it like right here. So, Oh, great. Uh, but it sounded phenomenal. And it was like really lucky that it didn't get seen. We didn't have to move it around. I don't know if yeah. it was comfortable for him, but it sounded okay. <laughs> yeah. Is there oftentimes if you have mics like on them all the time when we see the mics or like the cameras pick them up and they're like, cut, hide the mic. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so the nature of television when you're shooting it is like sometimes things are happening really quickly. The the camera angles are changing quickly. You know, on the show that I'm on now, sometimes we have four cameras. Sometimes on Legends, we had, well, we had three cameras pretty much every day. So you can imagine that, you know, it's really difficult to hide a mic for one camera and have it not show up for the other sometimes. So, yeah. You know, my team is really good at hiding the mics and putting them in the right spot so that it still sounds good. Yeah, sometimes we just don't get lucky and, and the costume, it, maybe it changes quickly or maybe they add a prop to it and it has to, the microphone has to move so it still sounds okay. And then it's in shot and my guys have to be on it quickly yeah. because <laughs> the clock is running and, and money is being spent for us to be there shooting these, you know, these crazy scenes. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, they don't want to wait for a microphone. They'd probably rather rip it off. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we have to be fast. Yeah. How closely do you have to or get to work with other departments like costume, for example, or or who do you work with? Probably the director and the camera people or who are the people that you talk to most? I think each of us on the team sort of works with certain people more than we work with other people like um my sound assist, Jason, would be working with, obviously, the cast, costumes, the assistant directors, the directing team, because they're always trying to get a handle on what kind of time it's going to take him to put mics on if they're waiting for us. It's, sort of putting microphones on the actors can oftentimes be the last thing that happens before we, right. we shoot. Yeah. So they're trying to do other things to like finalize the set, but they're really trying to get us get time estimates from us and figure out how long it's going to take. So those guys, at the same time, I might be dealing with, you know, members of the camera department, like the the DIT, who's the digital imaging technician. And we're trying to coordinate, you know, technical things or the script supervisor who's maybe mentioning that there was a line that's been changed. So I need to kind of keep track of all that stuff. Um, so that when I'm mixing along with it, I know what to expect more or less. My boom operator will often be on set, you know, choreographing the camera moves uh and yeah. and what he's gonna have to do to stay out of the lighting so yeah. he's working with lighting oftentimes the grips are setting certain things up to sort of shape the light so he'll have to maybe ask them for a favor if we can put something you know in a certain spot where light is coming in but you know it's not necessary to the to the shot that they have so they'll flag it off for him so he can sort of move around a little bit more freely uh and then we'll have the locations team will be putting mats down for us if they, the actors have noisy feet. Sometimes the set deck team will be moving things that, you know, maybe in the wider shots, but once we get into the tighter shots, they don't see those elements of, in the foreground. So they'll move it off yeah. to the side so that the team can move around a bit, a bit more. And right. then, uh, and then everybody else from productions, you know, we're, we're dealing with the transport department who are sending equipment back and forth from, <laughs> yes. you know, a rental house or a repair or something like that. We'll also be dealing with the, you know, the producers who have extra VIPs coming in and they'll need 
earpieces so they can hear what's going on in the scene. Like it's a huge collaborative environment, which is what I think we all love about it. And it makes it extremely complicated, but uh, yeah, it's fun. It's exciting. Yeah, it looks and sounds fun. You joined the show on season three, right? Yeah, so I was brought on um, as a second unit sound mixer. Okay. Uh, and I say second unit, but, you know, because we work such long hours, uh, the sound mixer that was on during that season, uh, he had a few things that he wanted to do or days that he wanted to take off. I think when I was first brought on, if I remember correctly, he was getting married. And so I, I came in and filled in for him for like a whole episode. So I was second unit in the sense that there was a main unit mixer who did the the vast majority of the work on the show. But whenever there was a double up day, like oftentimes the ninth day of the episode or the final day of the episode the main unit crew would go on to shoot the first day of the next episode so they'll oh, have a yeah. whole crew come in to shoot the final day of the episode yeah um and so i would be there for those i also did some playback on the first few episodes or sorry first few uh seasons where the the mixer is handling a bunch of you know dialogue mixing and so he'll bring in somebody else who will play music which is being choreographed in the scene. I think there was a Bollywood episode in the in season three, or maybe it was four. Yes. Um, so I was brought in for that, and they they would send me the the music uh, cues, and I would just you know work with the the dance choreographer and and the director and the you know the assistant directors, and we would try to make sure that we had our timing points correct, so that if during a particular shot we're only getting a percentage of that uh, song yeah and I needed to start at a certain time then yeah. I would be playing the music back for those people to kind of like you know cue them but yeah so I started off sort of doing a little bit of everything uh here and there more or less and then in season six I joined as the main sound mixer because of a scheduling conflict with the other sound mixer who had another project and uh, and then I stayed on right up until the end of the show. What kind of background do you have or what did you do before this? Like, how did you end up on Legends? Were you always interested in sound or were you, did you want to work on like TV or where did it like start for you? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. It's interesting to think that far back now. But <laughs> yeah. um, when uh, <laughs> when I was in high school, I think that's when I first became interested in sound. You know, I remember I, I had a Windows computer and I didn't know anything about sound, but I was curious. So I started messing around with the Windows. I think it was like note recorder or like little sound editor. And I was splicing in kind of like sound bites from other songs into songs I liked. And I would just like <laughs> to see how that worked. Once I graduated high school, I took an interest in like music production and I found some tools like... Um, There was one called Reason, and I just started learning how sound flows. I took some classes, and I, uh, you know, I did some live sound for some bands over the years. But I just sort of picked up these things and kind of figured out that I liked it, and I was interested in how it all worked. And I love the toys and the gadgets and the technology, and it kind of drove me further and further down this rabbit hole. And then I kind of dropped it for a while, and uh, I sort of focused on you know, a different career and element of uh, entrepreneurship and, and that kind of stuff that I was interested in at the time. And then at some point, I just decided you know, I kind of want to get back to that. So I started researching all these schools around kind of Canada and Western Canada. Yeah. And uh, I ended up out in Vancouver and I went to uh, this tour of Vancouver Film School. And when I saw it and all the tools that they had and how excited everybody was at the school and like working on their projects and Uh, collaborating. I just got really passionate about that. And and I, I knew that that was a spot that I wanted to go to, to learn more about sound, not even thinking that I would end up doing what I'm doing now. It was, you know, music composing that I was more interested in, but I thought this might be a gateway to get into the film world if I right. kind of go in through a film school. Cool. Um, and then all the things that I learned just became so second nature and so interesting to me. You know, as soon as I graduated from that, I went on into post-production and started doing like dialogue editing and sound effects editing and uh, Foley. Do you know what Foley is? No. <laughs> Foley is like when you're, you know, there's footsteps in the scene. And so somebody oh, yes, is yes. in a studio and they record them walking yes, along okay. the time. So I did all that. And then at some point I got an offer to start working on set and started with some commercials and then I did some short films uh, and then I started doing some smaller indie features and then I did some larger indie features and then uh, I found my way into uh, television and that's what I'm doing 
today. Well, television and movies. That's so cool. So when you are working on an episode, how much do you work on like before, during or after shooting? Like what are you doing? Do you need to prep a lot of stuff beforehand or do you just show up on the day because you already have the equipment and everything? Or if you're mixing live, does someone still go through the sound like afterwards or how does all of that work? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Uh, the pipeline of what we do is sort of like there's pre-production. I'm not as involved with that as I would like to be. We can get some really valuable insight about the wardrobe and the costumes, the locations that we're going to shoot at, some of the uh, environments, and they're going to source a turbine. They're going to start looking into turbines that are readily available or whatever it might be. But if they don't sound good, not everybody involved in sourcing that thing is going to be thinking about the sound. So the earlier that we can get involved with pre-production, it's, it's better. Um, but unfortunately, the reality of TV schedules and budgets is that we're often brought in kind of right when the show starts. So we have a little bit of prep time prior to the beginning of the season. Right. And then each show or each episode is almost overlapping. So I will be involved with like the early tech scouts when they we go out to the locations and we look at all the various, you know, set okay. kind of environments that we're going to be shooting in. And then I can go. Cool meet the various department members who are orchestrating things if I haven't already met them. But then once the show is starting, I don't have any time to go on any of those tech scouts. So I'm just on set, but every day. So I do try to read as much ahead as I can in the midst of shooting and doing all the things that we do on set. I'll try to familiarize myself with the next episode. Certain things will jump out at me that we'll need to address. And then I'll have a discussion with my team and have them kind of look over the things that Uh, they might have concerns with. And then if there's rentals, for instance, like if we're doing a playback day, we'll have to have either somebody come in or I'll have to have it figured out if I can do it myself. And yeah, more or less, we're just, we get into it. We, we shoot the whole episode. We're trying to stay ahead of everything that's coming up the next day or the day after that. Yeah. Um, but usually by the time we're getting close to the end of the episode, it's like, we're so just wrapped up in this current episode that it's yeah. it's so hard to like pull ourselves from like the onset environment which can be really sort of frantic at times and then just like tune in to reading this script and like figuring out all these details of something that like it seems so abstract because it's in the future and yeah we have no idea what it's going to look like we have no idea what the costumes are going to look like yeah. sometimes the people that are, are casted for certain roles we don't have any idea what you know, what they're going to do. Are they going to be loud? Are they going to be really quiet? We don't know any of that stuff. So right. we just make our best guess while we're in the middle of shooting. And then we just hope for the best and, and rely on our relationships to help us out if we find ourselves in a pickle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When you work on a show, do you watch the show yourself? Or are you like, because you're working on it and you do long hours, you're like, we're done. I never want to see this stuff again. Or are you like, oh, I really want to see what it like turned out to be? You know what? Um, I know people who don't like, it's funny because I'll talk to actors who don't watch the the episode sometimes. I can't remember. I, I'm pretty sure all of them on Legends watched the uh, the episodes, at least most of the cast, like they loved it. I know, you know, camera people or, you know, in some cases, sound people that just don't watch it. I'm the total opposite. Like okay. I'm a bit of a perfectionist yeah. uh, in the sense that I want to really dial in not just what we're doing, you know, as a foundational skill set for sound, but also like how our show sounds. Like if right. you're watching an episode, sometimes there's going to be music along, you know, underneath all that anyway. So if there's some noise in the background that are quiet, but they're there while we're recording it, we don't think about, oh, there's going to be music here. We just hear this distracting noise that's going to pull the you know, the audience away from what the actor's saying, which is really critical to building the plot. Right. Yeah. Um, ultimately, you know, our editors are extremely good at what they do, so they can get rid of some of that stuff. And if the music is there, you, you'll never know. You'll never know that those sounds in the background, there could be a dog barking or something, and, and we just don't, we don't know that. So I can familiarize myself better with the, the way our show presents itself on TV then that makes it easier for me to work with the teams on set. And we don't have to hold up production if there's like a, you know, a beeping in the background, but it's sort of quiet and we know our editors can deal with that. There's certain things that we can do to sort of like make things go smoother and faster. And I try to just 
uh, build that into my skill set so that the whole team can do what they do without uh, being slowed down. Yeah, that's fair. Do you have favorite episodes or moments or scenes in the show if you watch it so intently? Like, or do you just listen to the sound? Can you watch stuff <laughs> without like paying attention that's a to good... the sound? <laughs> Ooh, that's a that that question is a double edged sword. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, you know, I do notice things. I notice ADR, uh, okay. which is when the dialogue has been re-recorded. Yeah. Um, I try not to. I think the mark of a good show for me is when I don't notice that at all. And that's not just saying something about the sound, although it does. That plays a huge role. It's also about like, is the show engaging enough to have me not focusing on those minor details? Are the elements of the soundtrack and the And the and the action are, are they working well enough that I'm just like, hey, what's going to happen? Yeah, uh, that's harder to do on a show that you worked on because yeah. you know what's going to happen. You've seen it every take of it, maybe a hundred takes of the yeah. same scene. So I know all the variations of everything they said. It's funny sometimes because it's it airs weeks or months later. So it's fun kind of being transported back into that moment when we were shooting it. Yeah. Uh, And just remembering what it was like, and then sometimes things that they said, you know, on set that were funny will come back into memory, and yeah. and I'll mention those like the next day on set to my my team, and we'll all have a laugh about it or something. But uh, yeah, sorry, I, I kind of got off on a tangent oh, there. <laughs> the question was about like what um, favorite episodes or moments favorite like, episodes in the show, right? Um, let me think. There's so much, and and Legends yeah. is such a mixed bag. There was just so many, <laughs> it's seemingly random things that were just so unique. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, some of the moments that stood out the most were like extremely well acted scenes. I really like it when people push their boundaries. So one of the moments that I really liked was when uh, Tala, who plays Zari, 1.0 and 2.0, and yeah, yes, yeah. um, awesome. <laughs> yeah, so she was doing this one episode where she's uh, it's sort of like a like a singing competition episode. Oh yes. Uh <laughs> yeah. And the yeah. funny thing is like Tal is extremely talented. Uh I have a ton of respect for her. Yeah. But she I think was singing sort of live for maybe the first time in her career or one of the first times. And so what I did was we had some uh, equipment that I I felt would work well for this and I put together this like small little rig that had like a wireless mic and we gave her the microphone and the little unit and so she could bring it to her trailer with her and she could put headphones in and she could see what a microphone sounds like when she sings oh. into it you know because it's different when you're just singing to a crowd and when you yeah. put a mic in there If we're going to use that and we wanted to that was one of the reasons why I think they wanted her to do it live or she I can't remember if she wanted to do it live or if they if they asked her to. It was just really cool that she took kind of the bull by the horns. And so we just helped to kind of equip her for that. And it was fun to just be a part of that for her. It was all her what what happened on screen. But just like to have played a small part in that was cool for, for me in my career just to yeah. be a part of something. I really like creating. And I think sometimes as a sound mixer, we're capturing more than creating. Right. Um, we're sort of like these, almost like a goalie, or we're like catching things that other people don't, or we're like, yeah. <laughs> you know, trying to find where these noises are coming from and, and turn them off or find elements of the shot that are in the background that we don't see it. So we can ask them to stand down and then it makes less noise. But I, I really enjoy it when we get to be a part of the process and when we're asked to be a part of the process, because um, it's a different part of my brain that I get to utilize and uh and i think it just all adds up to why i like this career so much and why it keeps challenging me so yeah uh but yeah that was one of the big moments for sure it's a great scene yeah so we've heard we've heard a lot of singing surprisingly a lot of singing for a superhero show i think uh, yeah, so sure. what is what is that like for you how much does that affect your job that there's singing and is it usually live or is it playback or how does that happen I think that was the only episode that I did that was purely live. A lot of times they have the music is pre-recorded and the singing is part of that. So how that kind of affects me is like 
Well, what, like I said, when I came on board, I was doing playback. I'm really fortunate because some people that I look up to a lot um, are some of the bigger sound mixers in the world. And they, I think, ma- managed to do both the playback and the mixing, um, which is, right. a, it's a huge challenge. But like I mentioned, I, I like the challenge. So yeah. I've sort of built my kit in a way that allows me to kind of control it all. Also, in some ways, I'm sure nobody on set would disagree with me. Uh, I can be a little of much of a control freak in a sense. Okay, great. Uh, you know, all for the benefit of the show, ideally, we're trying to m- make the best show that we can. But, you know, when we bring in somebody to do playback, sometimes I don't get to control the timing. They might be listening for certain things. And I'm not sure if they're always able to read the room the way that I am because I'm on the show all the time. And if the director, is saying certain things to get certain cues. Like my ear is trained to listen for those cues, even through all the noise of the setup and all these things. So sometimes even as we're rehearsing, they'll be like, Oh, I wonder what's it, what's that part of the song where it does this da 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 da. And if I'm familiar enough with it, I'll be like, Oh, it's that part. And I'll just cue to that. And I'll play it over the speaker for them to hear at that moment. And it really helps them to make that happen quickly. Sometimes I'll be sending them their own mix in their in their little uh, listening device in their ear. Right. And so I can loop that for them so they can just learn the, the lines or like figure out the changes in the song. And they can just like have that moment to themselves while everything else is happening on set and we're not disrupting anything. But by listening in on that, I can make those changes. I don't necessarily think that somebody doing playback would be able to do that or feel confident doing that because they're kind of there as a day player. And, and as much as they would want to do the best that they can, I just don't think they have the, they're not equipped like I am to handle that. So yeah. Yeah. kind of get that sense of like, you're the guy in the chair. You're like a hacker almost yeah. doing all these things. But, but yeah, I get a kick out of it. Yeah. What types of scenes are your favorites to work on? Is it the scenes where there's a lot happening and you have a lot of stuff to do or the ones that maybe just have like two people talking you're like this is easy nice it's a great question i thought about it a little bit when you sent me the list and i to be honest i can't come up with a solid answer because it depends like we we really strive to get good quality audio within the context of what is being shot that day most times i think we're fairly successful but not always and it it can really be impacted by what we're shooting that day, like if it's singing and dancing, it's less critical to get anything audio wise on the microphones, because a lot of that's playback, and they're going to play it back, they're going to mix it properly for what we hear on screen. And then when we, um, you know, we have dancing and stuff like that, there's probably Foley going to happen for the critical moments that they want to hear the dancing. But like, you know, in terms of like, if it was a, a really emotional scene i really like being able to capture that because those are really challenging for an actor to recreate in a sterile studio environment where they're the only actor there in fact they got to get to set so they're like doing that before they come to their to shoot their scheduled work for whatever day on whatever episode we're on at that point to have to go and reproduce those emotions now i I respect and I love that actors are able to pull the, those emotions just kind of out of nowhere yeah. and perform them. But I imagine it's a lot more difficult to perform those types of scenes um, when you're all by yourself. When it's like, hey, Barad, like you can re-record that if you want to. That's not a big deal. But when it's like a really, you know, it's a connection scene and everybody is, you know, really wrapped up in the emotion, I wouldn't want them to have to redo that. So it's... Re- me tuning into that moment, whatever that might be on set is sort of the thing that I gravitate towards the most. And if that's like, we're doing a fight scene with Bishop or something like that, but there's a moment where somebody gets hurt and and there's a, a call out that's really important. If that's a moment that I think will be more challenging to recreate in the studio, then it's really important to me to get that line. There's yeah. other things that maybe we'll have to like, you know, put our perfectionism away and and just get what we can get that day but those moments just kind of jump out at me and then um i like the da- honestly i'd never thought i'd say this but i like the dance scenes i think those are fun <laughs> Great. Uh, that bollywood scene was really fun oh it's so- i like the um we did a karaoke scene which was really cool yeah and then there was one scene actually where all the all the legends came back most of the main cast members and they were all there and 
as we were doing this one big scene and everybody, everybody had a line. It was like moving around the galley and everybody had a line and they were all talking to each other, but the camera was like kind of moving through the room. So we would be the boom operator, uh, Bryce is just incredibly important for those moments because he's yeah. following through trying to avoid the lights, you know, that are coming down and shadowing the actors. Um, <laughs> he's trying to avoid the cameras. There's multiple cameras. The actors need places to move. There's like, people with lights kind of walking around, pointing the lights at, at, <laughs> at the actors alongside the camera. So like, it's a huge dance. I'm sure if you asked him that same question, he'd probably cite some of those ones as like kind of career highs for him. But when we can pull all that together, it kind of doesn't matter what the scene is, to be honest. It's more about like, how how is the team kind of collaborating to make this happen? And at the end of it, do we feel like, yeah, we did it. You know, that's the, I think that's what we're all going for. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite legend? Can Ooh, you have a favorite that's a legend? dangerous question. I don't know if you can. <laughs> <laughs> or who do you like um, to watch or like record? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I do. I do have a favorite or a couple favorites. But Great. my disclaimer here is not only do I love all of the legends, but I, I love them more towards the end than I loved than that than at the beginning regardless of what their character did or or could do in terms of their powers or yeah. or who they started off as i really like the character arc that they wrote for almost everybody like we saw everybody kind of go through a real change in perspective and and how they treated the other you know the world or the other legends but if i had to pick <laughs> two of my favorites would be gary yes he's gary that's gary and Constantine, because Constantine okay. was so like if you met Matt Ryan, he's like the sweetest man. He's yeah. he's really kind and friendly. He's just like he's always just easy to talk to, and he's really fun and funny guy. But that Constantine character is like he plays it to a T. Like somewhere deep down inside, Matt Ryan, sweet Matt Ryan, has this like Constantine inside him, and I'm just like, it's fantastic. It's crazy now. While I say that, my absolute all-time favorite legend is it's Gideon. Oh. I got to say it's Gideon. She is the best. What was your reaction when you found out that we're going to have her on screen for season seven? Like, always there. I mean, I was really excited. So I, I had met Amy uh, a number of times because she'd come out for little cameos. Yeah. You know, and then... Uh, I can't remember if we talked much prior to, or like in between. I met her, like, I can't remember which season it was, maybe season three or season four. I think she kind of came back a couple of times while I was there. But then, yeah, when when she became a full-time legend, we were all excited to see her. And we hadn't read the scripts for the whole season yet because they only come out like a couple episodes in advance oh, yeah. that I get to see anyways. Yeah. So. <laughs> We didn't know how long she was going to be there for. We didn't know. So every day was just exciting to see her there and getting to act alongside the legends where normally she was just the voice in the room. Yeah. You know, and actually her showing up on set kind of became some of the biggest challenges and opportunities for me in my career up until that time, because especially when it was Gideon talking to like evil Gideon. Oh, true. Yes. So the way that we did that was really, it was a totally new thing for me. And I'm not aware of any other sound mixers who have done it quite like this, but but maybe they have. So there was a number of lines that were scripted as Gideon or Evil Gideon. And in some of the scenes, it's not just the voice of Evil Gideon talking to normal Gideon. It was like, she's actually there and they're facing off they can see each other right we did some certain scenes where there was like you know camera moves that were choreographed and we have this like repeater head that sort of like tracks the camera's movement through space and then they can reproduce that camera move so that if they wanted to get her in the room but the camera's actually turning and moving then they can also get the other version of her in the same room okay cool Right. And we would shoot, we would shoot those as, as separate takes, but then she would go off and change and come back in the other outfit. And then yes. she would do <laughs> both things. When it related to dialogue, sometimes we would be recording the performance of the one side and then we would have to like cue the dialogue being played back. So there was instances where that was controlled by the, the repeater head uh, technician who 
plays it back in time so that they can have everything match. Um, but there was other situations where the dialogue was pre-recorded or we would record on set and it would be cut up. So like I, I would chop all of those dialogue pieces up and I would put them on this like sampler, this like drum sampler, which I had on my station. I'll send you a picture. It's really Great. interesting. So this is like another one of those creative moments where yeah. it's me not just like mixing and recording what is being said on set, but actually having some input in how it how it happens. Like, yeah. um, but I would like be listening in on what one of the, the cast members was saying. We did this with Matt Ryan. We did it with Amy, but then also with other cast members where we had just Amy's Gideon lines coming from the room. But I would like have some of these lines on these samplers and I would be listening to the performance and and then I would be hitting the the button to play it at the exact right time so that we could keep the pace of the performance from the actor in the scene or sometimes they would like like want to speed it up so I would try to like do it faster or I'd have to cut a line into two different parts so that I could say the you know the pre-recorded version might have had a little bit of a space or and I would have to like tighten it up so the fastest way to do that was to put it on its own button and I could like hit that while the actor's waiting for the line I'm like hitting it so I'm like right involved in it I'm mixing the microphones of all these actors in the scene <laughs> but I'm also playing one of the cast members dialogue yeah. it was yeah. like you were Gideon <laughs> yeah I mean in some ways obviously yeah. you know she she gets all the credit because she's amazing but but just to be lending that part of the timing and the and being involved in the scene to the actor who's in the scene and letting them kind of like play with whatever is given to them rather than just some sterile recording that uh, the first time you hear it, it sounds great. But the hundredth time you hear it, when we're doing it over and over again, yeah, there's no variation to it. It's so predictable that maybe that's not the best thing. Yeah. So we would have sometimes there was like 15 or something of them in a scene, like in a long scene, there'd be like 15. So I'm like right on it. I've color coordinated some of them so that I know which ones are which lines. Yeah. Um, I've, I've got like my script kind of filled out. So I know if I'm reading along with it the first couple of times, I know which cues go at which line and yeah. I've got them numbered on there. So that was a thing. Yeah. And that was really exciting. And I like, I remember as they would say roll sound, normally I'm just like, yeah, we're rolling and then you know we do what we're there to do yeah. but whenever those moments would come up my heart would just start racing because I know that like I got to perform now yes. too and if I'm if I make a mistake everyone's going to be like uh <laughs> <laughs> where's Gideon yeah oh. and most of what I do is so transparent it's in the background they don't know about it at all they just assume it's good and unless I come and talk to them it usually is good but in those moments it's very apparent if I'm not on it or if I'm like you know, not right in tune with what's going on. It's like they, it's like being a, in a spotlight, but from behind the scene. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. I, I remember we talked about that scene. I'm like, I would love to know how that like scene was filmed. Like how did the actual Gideon, evil Gideon that happen? So yeah, this was great. <laughs> Can you think of the craziest or the weirdest episode that you read <laughs> or you were there and you're like, I don't know what is happening? The fun. Okay. Well, I think, as you know, having watched the show, <laughs> there's always something strange yes. that happens. I think the moment where I was the most like, just, I had to really take like a bird's eye view of my life at that moment and be like, what? what am I doing? Like, how did I get here? <laughs> there was, um, there was one episode called, um, I think it was meet the legends. Oh yes. Um, you know, it's the, the diner episode and they're trying to discover what's going on with this sauce. Yes. <laughs> and if, if I remember correctly, so, so one of the cast members, he played the sort of like a mascot to the, the diner. Yeah. And he had like an alien head on, yes. <laughs> um, his name's Christian. He's a great guy. He's actually one of the choreographers for the dancers on the show. Oh, um, and That's so that cool. was a bit of like a yeah. It was cool because it was a cameo episode for him too. Yeah, you know, as an actor. That's hilarious. But there was one scene that we shot. It was on the Wave Rider. It's this goo that it was like dripping from. I think he. I can't remember how it worked. Did he vomit it out or something like that? He and did. it like it Very went up on the ceiling and it was like ceiling. dripping from the roof. Yes. And I remember while we were shooting that, 
I was like, you know, it's it was like butterscotch. Apparently, it was like some oh. sort of butterscotch. Okay. I don't know if anybody's mentioned that before. That's no, an Easter haven't. egg. <laughs> yeah. So it was like I remember going in there, and there was like this smell of like butterscotch, and and it's like dripping. And we're trying to get a mic in over the actors, but like the camera position is trying to see the butterscotch, and it's literally dripping. And and the cast is all arranged in this circle around the guy. Yeah. And we're trying to, he's trying to like swing the microphone in there without getting butterscotch on the boom pole. <laughs> I was like, can't we just do like a Hallmark talking head scene yeah. here? Like it would be so much easier, but yeah. it's so fun because now that's a memory, not just for us, but like for Christian and for everybody else that was involved. It's just, there was so many random, but exciting and interesting memories on that one that like, I, it's so hard to pick one. That's fair. But this was a good one. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I'll never forget that. How oh, amazing. <laughs> yeah, and there was always a theme, which is cool. Yeah. Um, I think the Aliens theme when it happened was sort of the right time for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next one was sort of, it was the 20s, wasn't it? We were in the 20s. Yeah, for season seven, they're stuck in the 20, 20s, yeah. Yeah. So most of that was like, yeah, them trying to get find their way back to the Wave Rider. And yeah. like, yeah, cool stuff, though. Yeah. So good. How many people are in the sound team when you talk about you leading a team? Like who is in your team? Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's getting to the point now where it's, it's oftentimes four on legends. It was four. Currently we're using a three person sound team. There's definitely moments where having a fourth person makes a big difference. Um, but it's always the sound mixer, a boom operator and a sound assist. Our sound assist will also do a second boom. So, a lot of scenes if they're doing split coverage like cameras looking in both directions you know we'll we'll shoot the close-ups of of one actor most of the time on one side and then they'll turn around and they'll shoot the close-up of the other actor and have be over the shoulder but nowadays they seem to be doing it more and more where it's both so we need to have a boom mic over both actors oh Um, right so depending on the scale of the scene and how many cast members are in it and what's going on how long the scene is how much movement there is there's other cast members than just the small group that's talking and being covered simultaneously, then we will also have to do all the regular fixes on microphones and other things that a sound assistant would normally do. So having a fourth person, especially in those moments is is kind of critical. And I'm usually so far away from set trying to get like a good quiet listening position so that I can, you know, handle everything. And, and it's time consuming to move my carts around and, and replug, repatch everything. So I'm okay. kind of far. And I can't really help that much on set yeah. Um, unless there's a big break. Yeah, usually it's just three. But on Legends, we had four because we had such a large cast. And there was always, you know, high heels and boots that needed to have, like, treatments on them. So they'd be quiet when they're walking, you know, right. on the grates and stuff like that in the Wave Rider. Oh, yeah. um, the, the playback and all the listening devices, the IFBs and Comtex that we hand out to all the VIPs on set. Like, it's a huge job. So yeah Um, like there's a lot of scenes when all of them have to say something so there's a thing that has to be said and then they just split it to like all that like everyone says like one sentence yeah and i'm like even the fact that there's only four i'm like okay wow because there's like so many of them who are talking all the time (laughs) and so are there sounds or moments that you are like professionally the most proud of where you're like yes we nailed that and that worked really well yeah i there was some really like poignant movement uh moments like um nick zano's sort of like um his moment kind of at the end where he's like you know i'm gonna go into the totem that's a heartfelt moment and everybody has like a reaction to that there's just prior to that we were in the same location we were shooting uh sarah lance sort of like having a a moment and they're freaking out underneath the blanket and then they're both there and then yeah and then they kind of have this real like connection moment like that was not the quietest set and then we're trying to also like get these quiet moments. So once again, they don't have to re-record them. So like some of those moments are, they stand out because I know what the team had to do to get the good sound on those ones. Yeah. Every day was like a, a learning experience because we never quite knew how anything that you read on the script, how that's actually going to look in yeah. real life and what they're, what's going to be like, how are they going to make this show up on screen and how's that going to affect sound? So yeah, it was like every single day was a, was a, like film school. <laughs> yeah, 
Can you think of scenes that made you laugh or cry the most? I actually wasn't there present. Like we were, I think it was the second unit day where uh, Constantine dies. So yeah. we had moments where like Zari reacting to that was like, we had seen some of that, but not the whole thing. Obviously in the same way that, you know, trying to protect those emotional performances, you know, we were paying close attention to it on the day when we were shooting pieces that we were shooting. But then when I watched it on screen and I finally got to see it all together, yeah, I, I remember being emotionally charged. And, you know, and I think that whenever those moments happen on screen, it's a result of everybody doing top quality work. Like obviously the actors, they're kind of the, how they convey that, but the writers and, you know, the director and even the camera, you know, angles and, and how they pull that off. There's so much thought that goes into that from every angle that like us doing a good job it's just one small piece of a huge puzzle and then you know watching it all come together on screen luckily i can like directly tell if i did a good job when i'm watching it but some of those moments are ones that i just tuned right in and wasn't paying attention to the dialogue or or it was just the dialogue was perfectly recorded and and yeah. we could just like really pay attention to the story that's happening and really focus on the acting for the first time Yes. Maybe we've seen it a, a hundred times on set, but then for the first time, I'm just literally watching it just to find out what's happening. Like what what's happened? happening in this show, what's happening to this character. Yeah. Like that was, those are some of the best moments where the, where it all pays off when you're watching the show and you just forget that you worked on the show and you're just watching a TV show. Yeah. Anything that comes to mind that was really funny. The funny thing is about working on the show is while the characters and the actors are so different, there's so much of the actor in the character. So like, it's funny, like it, my mind doesn't think of them as being different things sometimes <laughs> when I see it on screen. And I, and I know some of the lines were changed by like the actors or they're performed as like an ad lib or a variation on the line. Oh, and so great. when I watch it and I know that they didn't use the scripted line, they went with yeah. the ad lib because the actor did it. And yeah. I just know the laughs that people had on set, you know, when the first time that they delivered it and it was like, yeah, I, <laughs> it's really great. I mean, the the cast on that show is so it, it's all very like organic and everything kind of happened in the moment. And to see these like performances kind of come out of nowhere and then just oh, they're on set or they're on screen. It's just like, yeah, I'm really glad we did this, actually, because it's reminding me of all these moments and these memories that I kind of forgot about because we haven't worked on the show now for like yeah. uh, a year. Yeah. And yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, no, I'm glad that you're, you know, you're asking these questions because my mind's going off on all these memories that I'm going to bring up next time I'm talking to the team. And, and now I'll probably reach out to some of the actors or, or the crew members that we haven't talked to for a while. So yeah, thanks. Yeah. for the, Thanks for this invite. Yeah, of course. Great That's that funny. people are happy to talk for a long time because I'm like, I could just go on forever. But um, well, I think that says a lot about you as an interviewer and as just like a enthusiastic fan that, uh, yeah, I you really know, want to hear make, everything. <laughs> well, you make it interesting, too, to talk about something that, like, when we do this every day, we, we forget, I think, sometimes that it's exciting to people to watch it and to yes. be curious about how it's made because you're so attached to the characters and the story. Yeah. But you might not know all the things that we know. And then we may be not as attached to the characters and the story because my job is technical in nature. So I'm more focused on, you know, the behind the scenes stuff. So, yeah. But we love that uh, that there are fans that, you know, keep tuning in and keep watching and getting excited about, you know, the developments that are happening in the story. And um, yes. you guys are the reason that we even have jobs. So um, it's pretty awesome that um, that you've been following along and catching up with all this, the seasons as, you know, before you started watching it and stuff. So it's great. Yeah. Can I ask what your favorite season is? Because obviously you mentioned it changed a lot and. And like, I wasn't there for season one or two, but well, even from season of those. three. <laughs> I could, I could oh, that's that. good. You said you started watching it in season six? Or that's when I started my videos. Like I started oh, watching your videos. the show okay. in season three, but then I just oh, okay. watched it alone in silence for like a couple of years. And then, <laughs> then when COVID happened, I was like, now I have time and I'm just home and whatever. So why not record? Because I used to watch people reacting to Legends. So I was like, I could do that. Now that you mentioned COVID, I, it's one of your questions was about like kind of, I can't remember exactly what it was, but 
but it made me think about how like for me i was working on a bunch of different shows prior to covid and then when covid happened i came back to vancouver from shooting a movie in winnipeg and there was like all of a sudden no work and not just for me but like for everybody there was like not even just in our industry but like everybody there was like yes. everything was shut down there was lockdowns yes. and we're like gig workers we work you know on a project and then we finish that project and then we look for another project or sometimes we have something to jump onto right away i remember feeling like what's going to happen we don't know how you know are we going to go back to work what's it going to be like is it going to be all like six feet di distances am i going to have to find a way to work from another room than everybody else like Am I going to work from home? Like, how, how is this going to happen? Is the technology going to have to do something? Yeah. And I remember like coming back to Legends, which I had worked on, again, like second units and things like that prior to COVID. But then I remember feeling this real sense of like, just calm when they asked me to do season six at that time, because I knew all these people. And even though we were going to be wearing masks and have, you know, six feet apart between us, I knew them all like we would talked we would laughed and joked around we'd spent we'd eaten lunch together and hung out like you know after work together in some cases and it's like it's so much easier to go back to work in an uncertain world where you know we were being told that like this virus can kill you you know and, and yeah. it definitely strained some relationships because it's already a stressful and fast-paced environment sometimes but having those friendships built and in place already and coming back to legends and just feeling like hey everybody here gets it and like we're all in the same boat and we all know each other it's like i can imagine starting a brand new show right after covid coming back to work and still not knowing how we're going to do all this and having to meet everybody with masks on and like yeah. get to know them and figure out how to make a show together and like yeah. that would have been so much different than what we had which was you know, just this family of like people who really care about the show and the cast who really cared about the crew and, and vice versa. And it was just like, yeah, I, I couldn't have asked for a better opportunity to come back to work when that happened. Yeah. Yeah. I do remember when we heard that you guys are going to go back and shoot season six. I remember thinking about it and talking to other fans about it. I was like, I wonder what it's going to look like. Or like, are we going to see it in the show or feel it in some way that this is filmed during like very extreme times the whole world like shut down and then we hear that you guys are making the show so we're like so what does that mean <laughs> like are they gonna be like one person on screen at the time or like what is that like what is that gonna be <laughs> so, so did you notice anything when you oh no, i you... i remember in that episode that you talked about before with x factor like zari singing and that yeah. i remember in that thinking like here you can see that there should be more people because like right. the whole like set of like filming X Factor and there's like one person standing there, one person standing and then just like a lot of space like backstage, for example. I'm sure the wish would have been that there would be like people like everywhere and it would be like crazy backstage and woohoo. And then that the audience is like on the big, just the screen and whatever. I was like, that yeah. was the, I think that was the only time when I was like, okay, here you can see it. But when the season started, I was like, Oh, this is exact. Like this is just normal legends. Like you, I, I didn't see it at all. So, <laughs> sorry, I have a visitor. <laughs> um, it's funny that you mentioned that because I kind of thought the same thing. Because again, like we don't know what art department has planned for the different scenes. We don't know if it's going to be people on screens or million people in background walking by and like there was like a baseline of tests that you had to do before you could be on set it was like you had to do at least two tests or something like that so oh. i remember thinking you know whenever there was a big background day the camera department uh, would be very like you know adamantly wearing their masks and like people who have preferred to have their masks off you know and be outside a bit more would like double masking and wearing as much you know protection as they could because we had all these people that were weren't part of the equation and then all of a sudden there's like 80 people or 30 people in the set that like we didn't we didn't expect them to be there you never knew day to day if there was going to be a lot of people there all of a sudden just like bringing whatever they could have had to set yeah. but again like having that those relationships with everybody it's like we could talk about it we could like yeah you know, help each other feel better about everything. And uh, 
yeah it's definitely been an interesting journey for the whole world the last couple of years but like in the film world uh it did change the way we worked uh, quite a bit for a while now it's sort of back but there's still like we we still have to test but it's less frequently okay, okay. um we we wear masks if you know in certain environments like if we have to be really close together like the crew shuttles and things like that then they wear masks um but like you know on set you don't have to some people still do in certain scenarios if they yeah, feel like it's you know but what a change and yeah. and to, and to hear that it didn't impact the show that much like that actually is is great cuz i'm sure that i'm sure the producers and the and the ad's would be really happy about that cuz they have to like orchestrate all the background and their movements and then yeah. you know the cast is probably like hey can we get, just get not 200 people walking by us during this bit yeah. cuz like we have a lot of dialogue <laughs> yeah exactly yeah uh the last one i always <laughs> i feel like i've asked this every time from everyone who i've talked to favorite memories or moments that come from like making the show or things that make you now like really happy and proud that you worked on legends when you did you know Legends was sort of my first like network TV project on my career. In my career I'd done some movies and other stuff like that, but it was sort of the first show that I worked on that I would watch. Like I like sci-fi <clears throat> and I like yeah. um I like superheroes. I always have like I've read comic books since I was a little kid. Yeah. Um and it was like the first thing that I got involved with where I was like, wow, like this is something that it's sort of one of the reasons why I got into doing what I'm doing so that I could ultimately work on the types of things that had an impact on me and help them have an impact on whoever's watching them, you know, once we're finished working on it. But uh we have so many good memories. The show that I'm on now has uh, a lot of the same crew from Legends. Um, oh, that's cool. It just worked out that way and yeah. in a lot of ways like it had become sort of like a family and i'm sure that's like what our producers are trying to keep like like that vibe of the family kind of crew working together and continuing to like rely on those relationships to make the best product but we have just good people come and go you know the sound mixer that brought me on to the show originally just gave me a huge leg up to give me that opportunity and it being such a unique show and having so many different avenues for me to you know learn and and different scenarios whether it was superhero costumes or period costumes or old yeah. vehicles new vehicles military vehicles blue screen green screen yeah. like <laughs> We we just did everything, so I learned so much. If you only did one type of show, maybe you just did reality shows, or you only did like um, a Hallmark kind of, you know, lovey dovey types of relationship shows, you never get to yeah. see some of these crazy stunt and dance and singing and you know all that stuff. So, <laughs> but yeah, and we we had some we had great people on the show. We had great directors. We've seen some of our cast start as actors and then direct episodes. And like Ooh. all of that is just such a cool arc to be a part of, and uh, I don't think I could have asked for a first show to work on that would have given me as much as this one did. So it's just been amazing, and and it, we're very fortunate that we still have some of those people around us nowadays, so we can still have memories from the show. And and uh, and it's funny because a, a lot of them will still wear the like wrap gifts, like sweaters and jackets oh, yeah. that were given from. <laughs> legends and then it'll spark a conversation about legends just in the middle of the day when you walk by like the dolly grip or like a script supervisor or something like yeah. that so yeah it's pretty cool stuff and it's mm. it's been a great journey yeah luna would like to say hello she's uh she's been patiently waiting oh, for her chance luna. to <laughs> <laughs> she's like are you done <laughs> yeah right well cool. this has been amazing thank you so much for doing this and for chatting and it was so cool to hear about your job and i know i can speak for everyone who is watching this that we really appreciate everyone who worked on the show so thank you for everything that you've done for legends yeah uh, thanks really to, cool you. to you i mean it's nice because it kind of reminds me that i need to connect with some of the people i haven't talked to for a bit since the show but i'm going to pass on kind of some of these questions and things that you've given me to the to the other guys on my crew and just like see right. how they feel about some of that stuff and uh yeah. but yeah thanks thanks for doing this for everybody and for sharing this because um 
you know, I was more than happy to share kind of my experience, but that's totally different than the actor's experience is totally different than the director's. Yeah. So, I mean, it's great to just be able to have a, a chance to talk with somebody like you who's excited about it and share all that stuff. And then for everybody who's out there who doesn't, you know, have access to everybody on set just to learn yeah. as much as they can. Who knows? Maybe some of them will end up being actors or, or sound mixers one day. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So thanks so much, Tia, and thanks for having me. And I'm uh, I'm excited to to see some of the other ones that you post and um and uh, stay in touch if there's anything else that you want to ask or yeah um yeah or if you decide to do a, a Tia reacts to Fire Country, then you know who to. Contact. I mean, I mean, <laughs> check it out. Actually, it's um it's it's a it's a really exciting show. The lead cast member, his name is Max. He just cares so much about this, and it's like a story about from the area that he grew up in. He's got really close friends who are in the fire department there, and these oh, are like stories cool. that kind of it stems from like sort of his upbringing and yeah and it's a great show and it's only just getting better the cast is phenomenal they really remind me of the legends oh crew. um <laughs> but you know there was sort of a revolving door almost in legends there was just new cast members coming and going <laughs> and uh i just i really like our cast on this one i really like legends too but like learning what we did about legends now i just i really hope our cast stick around oh, i hope yeah. we get them for a long time because they're just yeah. great people yeah so, <laughs> everyone who's watching this go and check out this was great thank you so much matthew feel free to reach out anytime and it's been really cool just to connect and chat with you and yeah um, okay thanks to you see you later bye